hey guys, think you can't spray Cerakote at home? Wrong, it's super easy and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Hey guys, it's Brian. I am back in the shop again today. I got a really cool project to go over with you today. Today we're going to be spraying something called C-Series Cerakote. Now this is an ambient cure product and I've sprayed Cerakote on this channel before, but I don't think I've really kind of gone over why the C-Series is so superior to other systems, but I'm going to go over that just a little bit right now. One is that the C-Series is an ambient cure, so it's a single part system. There's no hardener, there's no oven cure afterward. It's extremely simple to use. You do have to have a compressor and you also have to have a high volume, low pressure spray gun in order to use this product. But if you have those, you're ready to go. It's as easy to spray as a rattle can paint. It's an unbelievably easy product to use. So if you've been following this series, you know that we've been restoring the CRF 70 pit bite. And in this project, we're gonna be spraying the motor on that bike. And as you probably recall, that thing was unbelievably nasty. Now spraying an engine of this type is a little bit complicated. And that's one thing I thought you might find beneficial in this video. I'm gonna show you some cool techniques about like getting into some tight spaces, like the fins and some of the other really tight crannies inside the motor. So that's one thing we're gonna go over in this video that I think is really gonna be helpful. So I want to digress just a little bit, which it seems like I do a lot of in these videos, and talk to you a little bit about something called Blast Profile. So Cerakote has very detailed directions about how the surface should be prepared for any object that's going to be painted using one of their systems, whether it's metal or plastic or whatever. And they talk a lot about this Blast Profile that is created using a sandblasting technique. So a lot of these videos, I've had people criticize me for not following the exact procedure that's dictated by Cerakote in their data sheets and their literature. So I just wanted to explain a little bit about why this isn't as critical as people think and why you really shouldn't worry about it too much. So basically, you know, a manufacturer is put in a difficult position. They have to promulgate some kind of written and very specific protocol to follow when you're using their products. And think about it from their perspective. If they didn't do that, they would have people like you and me emailing them all the time, asking them for clarification and so on. And they would just be inundated with people asking for special clarity on things. And so they have to basically put something down that's very firm. But unfortunately, people you know, kind of lose their ability to kind of reason through that and make up their own mind basically about what that means. So let me give an example. So not long ago, I was spraying a dirt bike rear shock spring. And if you're familiar with spring steel, you probably know that that is an extremely hard steel. It's very hard. And it's also, of course, you know, a pliable steel because it has to be, you know, it has to return and be compressed and stuff and return its original position. So it's a very unique kind of steel. And so I was concerned that perhaps that type of steel was not suitable to Cerakoting because perhaps the Cerakote was too rigid and it might like flake off or something like that. So I was a little bit concerned about that. So I emailed Cerakote and asked for some clarity on that. They told me basically, essentially, it's completely fine to go ahead and, and use Cerakote on that spring, which I did. The reason I bring this up is because, of course, there's a blast profile that I should have if I was following their exact direction that I should have on the spring, but I didn't follow that. I used paint stripper and I used some Scotch-Brite and I ended up sanding that spring down and it turned out fantastic. Now, the point I'm trying to make in all this is that the spring has no clue whether it was you know, shot blasted, whether it was vapor blasted, whether it was sand blasted, or whether it was sanded down after being paint stripped like the way that I did it. The surface is gonna end up the same. So, you know, don't be too bogged down by this whole thing about blast profile. If you have enough of a rough surface that the paint will adhere, that's really all you need to worry about. And just like as another example, and I won't keep going on and on, but, you know, for instance, the cylinder head that I'm doing on this job, it has a lot of fins and so on, and those are never gonna be smooth. So, you know, if you're trying to get a perfectly smooth surface, you know, you might have to be a little bit more careful, but I have sprayed Cerakote on things as rough as cylinder heads as, and as smooth as polished cases on a motorcycle, and I have honestly never had any failure of the Cerakote. 
By far the most important factor on Cerakote and making it perform correctly is cleanliness. And we're gonna go over cleanliness or not a lot. So I just wanna kind of clarify those things. You know, it's like I was saying to somebody recently, like if you have a diamond and you sand it or you sandblast it or you vapor blast it, the end surface that that diamond's gonna have is gonna be essentially the same, you know. So don't worry too much about this blast blast profile stuff. Just get the surface nice and rough, very, very clean, and it's gonna be absolutely fine. So all that aside regarding all the Cerakote blast profile business, one thing I wanted to mention is that Cerakoting is extremely rewarding. The results are absolutely fantastic. As I mentioned earlier, the motor that came out of the CRF was probably the nastiest motor I've ever worked on in my life. And uh, this video is being made after all the spray has been done. I can tell you the cases look absolutely fantastic. In fact, the entire motor looks amazing. So let's just move on. I'm gonna show you how to spray this Cerakote at home. It's very, very simple. You don't have to be nervous at all. I'm gonna take you through it step by step. So let's get going. So in my case, I sent all these parts off to vapor blasting first and had them cleaned up really good by Houston Vapor Blasting. I also put them in my ultrasonic cleaner and I let them soak in there for some time. And finally, I always go over them with soap and water and I only use Dawn dishwashing soap. That is by far the best dishwashing soap out there and the best degreaser for this type of work to get off all of the chemicals from the ultrasonic tank. One thing about a pit bike is you gotta really spend your time getting inside these fins, scrubbing like crazy, because a little bit of oil or something down there would definitely make it so the Cerakote won't stick. So spend the time scrubbing and cleaning and getting inside of every one of those little fins with a lot of care. Now we're gonna do some masking. So I've done a little bit of the masking already. A Couple little tips uh, that I thought you might like to see. So right here I have a brass plumbing fitting and I've covered it in tape. I'm gonna put two-faced tape on this and then stick it to the bottom of this tappet cover. And the reason I'm doing that is these are so light that I'm concerned that they may blow away with the air pressure from the gun. So plus this will elevate them a little bit and make it easier to spray around the edges. Also, like on this piece here, I put a washer under there uh, to raise this up just a little bit so that it, when it's sitting on the uh, deck, it's got a little bit of gap so that I can uh, spray along the edges a little easier. Now we're basically ready to go ahead and do some masking. So I'll show you some of my masking techniques. Just gonna mask up these cases and the cylinders. Uh, probably move through this part a little quickly, but I'm gonna show you how to do the masking on this and then we'll go straight into the Cerakote. So I'm just using, you know, basic masking tape. Uh, they do make automotive masking tape and it works great. I just don't happen to have any. And a lot of people have this type of tape laying around. So I thought I would just try to uh, use something that was practical and that was readily available and lots of people had. And I just work my finger along the edge to kind of show the edge of the face that I'm going to be taking the tape off of. I have a, a little collection of various files. And this is what I use to cut off the edge of the tape so that it uh, follows the edge of the face that I need to mask off. All right, so now that we've got all the parts masked off, this is a good time to go over something really, really important and probably the single most important point to having a successful Cerakote job, and that is cleanliness. So you saw earlier that I went through all these parts. I scrubbed them really good with Dawn dishwashing soap. I cleaned them off afterwards. 
But when you really get down to the nitty gritty, you've got to go over these parts with acetone and get them completely spotless. So a couple of things to consider when you're cleaning these parts. One is use brand new unused nitrile gloves like the ones that you see here. These are great for all kinds of things, but they're especially good for keeping your fingerprints off of your parts. So if you've got some good gloves like that, another thing that you need to consider is getting brand new unused claws for wiping the parts down. Now I like these by Stellar that you see right here. I have had a great success with these. I got these at Granger's, but you can get them in different places. They're really, really fantastic. They're very durable, but like any kind of paper towel, they do get roughed up on some of these rough surfaces. So you do have to flip them on a regular basis and provide a new surface that's touching the part before you know it starts to break into little bitty bits. So one thing I was going to mention about the parts break or the claws breaking up is that you're going to have to take those off with a tack rag or with compressed air, but I'll get into that a little bit more. So right now, let's just go ahead and move on. I'm going to show you how to clean these parts up with acetone. Anywhere that you have done masking, your fingers have touched, and those are always areas you want to be very, very cognizant of to keep clean because if your finger's been rubbing the tape or something, you've more than likely left behind a little bit of oil. So just keep that in mind. Keep those areas really clean. You see, I've already kind of torn the towel, so I gotta switch. And then getting inside these fins is obviously not easy. Just do the best you can. On these rough surfaces, you have to go back with something like a uh, air chuck to some compressed air to make sure that none of these little bits of towel stay behind. These things can fall apart, as you can see. So you just want to be careful you don't have any little bits of towel left behind. This particular surface, the cast surface, is really bad for that. So just keep that in mind and be careful. All right, now we're on to the fun stuff, the cases. So I came up with an idea on another motor that I did, which was passing a threaded rod through both cases and then bolting them together. That way I do not have to mask off the center line of the uh, cases. It worked out really good, so I'm gonna do it again. I just pass this bolt through both sides and bolt it together. So when you clean the part with acetone and you've gotten a clean cloth back, it's time to go to the final step, which is using the tack cloth. A tack rag or a tack cloth, the purpose of this is to lift off any additional pieces of lint or anything that might have been left behind from the towel that you're using or any kind of dust that might have gotten on the part since you last cleaned it. So just go over every surface with a tack rag and then we're ready to paint. All right, so now that we have all the parts ready to spray, I wanted to take just a couple more minutes to talk to you a little more about Cerakote C. A few things to consider. One is this is intended to be sprayed between 50 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So another thing that comes up a lot is that there is a lot of discussion out on the internet regarding the hardness of the hardener based or the oven cure H series and the C series, which is the ambient cure. And I could go on and on about this, but the bottom line is this. They're both extremely hard. There is a greater amount of variation in the C-Series, which I've had discussions with Cerakote about this, and the main reason for that is because of the pigments. In the H series the pigments are hardened using a hardener and heat, so the hardness rating is much higher, or I shouldn't say much higher, it's more consistent. And in the C-Series, the Ambient Cure, it's affected more by the types of pigments that are used. Some pigments are a little bit harder than others, but that's really the difference. It's like I say a lot of times, it's like the difference between a cubit zirconia and a diamond. I mean, it's almost the same amount of hardness. They're both very, very hard. And for the application like this motor, it's perfectly adequate. A couple other things regarding the settings on your gun. So if you want to get the pattern down just right, the way that you do that is you get the gun about five inches away from your surface and you should produce about a three inch oval shaped pattern that's pretty wet in the center. So if you're not getting that pattern, you're going to have to play with some of the adjustments. And another thing too is the air pressure setting is almost always 20 PSI on, on the colors that I've used, but it's a good idea just to go ahead and check and make sure that 20 PSI is a recommended spray for the Cerakote that you're using. So that's about all I have to say on that. So let's go ahead and pour some Cerakote and get ready to spray. All you have to do with this, with this Ambient Cure C system is put in the strainer, and in this case it's the specification for this one is 150 mesh, and pour the color mix directly into the gun. 
So the C system has to be shaken at least five minutes in the same way that the H system does, so just make sure that there's no media that's settled on the bottom of the jar. We're gonna go out and spray this one right now. So I wanted to show you the more tricky techniques for spraying Cerakote, and that is getting into really tight places, corners, and tight crannies, and things like the fins that you see here. So on the right, you'll see the cylinder head. Now, the technique that I'm applying on the cylinder itself right now, I've already done to the cylinder head, and that's basically alternating the angle of the gun and using short bursts to try to get inside those fins. So what I've done is I'll spray the fins at one angle and then rotate the gun about 45 degrees and spray it again at another angle so I can get both sides of the fin. Now the trick is you just don't wanna lay on too much of a coat. If you do, you're gonna have runs. So uh, kind of alluding to what I was saying earlier, I'm giving this cylinder head on the right a little bit of a rest after spraying it in a similar fashion like I'm doing on the cylinder. So getting these little tight spaces, you gotta be careful with the gun and not lay on too thick of a coat. All right, so I'm gonna let that one rest. Now I'm going over to the head and putting the second coat on. So same technique, different angles from the top, from the side, and then finally, when it's all you know, basically coated the best that I can get it inside those little fins, it's not easy, then I'll just lay in a nice broad, broad stroke like this. Nice broad stroke. By doing it this way, you'll avoid runs. That's the biggest trick when you're trying to do some detail work like this. You'll end up over spraying it or putting too much material down and you'll have a run. So you gotta be real careful about, about that. Short bursts at first and then go over the broad spaces last. So you'll get it. It's not that difficult. Just don't get too aggressive and be careful. And It'll turn out looking like this case does right there. It's awesome. Man, these parts turned out kick ass. I mean, look at that. They look fantastic. Really, really turned out nice. So uh, let's, uh, let's take the tape off and do the big reveal. That uh, is a completed, oh wait, one more. Cool, turned out nice. That just looks so kick-ass. That turned out awesome. All right, so what do you think? Are you ready to spray Cerakote at home? Well, it's not that hard as you can see, so I hope you got the confidence to try it yourself. So, hey, I just wanna say um, I've really enjoyed working on this project and I've had a lot of fun doing this CRF 70 series. I hope that you'll follow along, along with our sponsors, T-Bolt USA, who've been so gracious to help us with this project. I wanna also say I've met so many nice people using uh, the internet and YouTube. It's been a great experience. I've met a tremendous number of people through this medium and it's been a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. If you keep watching, I'll keep making videos and most of all, have fun in your garage.